Professor Trelawney. So my friends call me Sybil. I'm here to read you a little story today. But unfortunately, I have to put my reading glasses on. These are my divination glasses. They help me see the auras. But to read the story, I'm going to have to wear my reading glasses or I won't be able to see a thing. So here is the story. It's called Harry Potter. And we're going to start at the beginning, chapter one. Are we ready? Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four Privet Drive were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you would expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. Mr. Dursley was the director of a film called Gunnings, which made drills. He was a big, beefy man with hardly any neck. Although he did have a very large mustache, Mrs. Dursley was thin and blonde and nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful as she spent most of her time craning over ga garden fences and spying on her neighbors. The Dursley had a small son that they called Dudley, and in their opinion, he would, there was no finer boy anywhere. The Dursleys had everything they wanted, but they also had a secret. And their greatest fear was somebody might discover. They didn't think they could bear it if anyone found out about the Potters. Mrs. Potter was Dur Mrs. Dursley's sister, and they hadn't met for several years. In fact, Mrs. Dursley pretended she didn't have a sister because her sister was a good-for-nothing husband, were as undursleyous as it could possibly be. The Dursleys shuddered to think what the neighbors would say if the Potters arrived in their street. The Dursleys knew that the Potters had a small son too, but they had never even seen him. The boy was another good reason for keeping the Potters away. They didn't want Dursley mixing with a child like that. When Mr. and Mrs. Dursley woke up on a dull gray Tuesday, our story starts. There was nothing about the cloudy sky outside to suggest the strange and mysterious things that would be happening all over the country. Mr. Dursley hummed as he picked out his most boring tie for work. And Mrs. Dursley gossip, gossiped very happily as she wrestled a scream in Dursley into his high chair. None of them noticed a large, tawny owl flutter past the window. At half past eight, Mr. Dursley picked up his suitcase, pecked Mrs. Dursley on the cheek, and tried to kiss Dudley goodbye, but missed, because Dudley was now having a tantrum and throwing his cereal at the walls. Little tyke. <laughs> tortured Mr. Dursley as he left the house. He got into his car and backed out of number four's drive. It was the corner of the street that he noticed the first sign of something peculiar. A cat reading a map. For a second, Mr. Dursley, Dursley didn't realize what he had seen. He then jerked his head around to look again. There was a tabby cat standing on the corner of Privet Drive, but there wasn't a map in sight. What could he have been thinking of? 
It must have been a trick of the light. Mr. Dursley blinked and start, started, stared at the cat, and it stared back. Mr. Dursley drove around the corner, up the road. He watched the cat in his mirror. It was now reading the sign that says Privet Drive. No, looking at the sign. Cats couldn't read maps or signs. Mr. Jervis gave himself a little shake and put the cat out of his mind as he drove towards town. He thought of nothing except for a large order of drills he was hoping to get that day. But at the edge of town, drills were driven out of his mind by something else. As he sat in his usual mute morning traffic jam, he couldn't help but notice him there seemed to be a lot of strangely dressed people about. People in cloaks. Mr. Dursley couldn't bear people who dressed in funny clothes. The get-ups you saw on young people. He supposed this was some stupid new fashion. He drummed his fingers on the steering wheel. His eyes fell onto a huddle of weirdos standing quite close by. They were whispering excitedly together. Mr. Dursley was enraged to see that a couple of them weren't young at all. Why, that man had to be older than he was and he was wearing an emerald green cloak. The nerve of him. But then it stuck Mr. Dursley that this was probably some silly stunt. These people were obviously collecting for something. Yes, that would be it. The traffic moved on and a few minutes later, Mr. Dursley arrived at the, Grin at the Grunnings parking lot. His mind was back on drills. Mr. Dursley always sat with his back to the windows in his office on the ninth floor. If he hadn't, he might have found it harder to concentrate on drills this morning. He didn't see the owl swooping past in broad daylight, though people down in the street did. They pointed and gazed open mouth after owl after owl sped overhead. Most of them had never seen an owl, even at nighttime. Mr. Dursley, however, had a perfectly normal owl-free morning. He yelled at five different people. He made several important telephone calls and shouted a bit more. He was in a very good mood until lunchtime when he thought he had to stretch his leg and walk across the road to buy himself a bun from the bakery. He'd forgotten all about the people in cloaks until he passed a group of them next to the bakers. He eyed them angrily as he passed. He didn't know why, but they made him uneasy. This bunch were whispering excitedly too, and he couldn't see a single collected him. It was on his way back past them, clutching a large donut in his bag, that he caught a few words of what they were saying. The Potters, that's right, that's what I heard. Yes, their son, Harry. Mr. Dursley, Dursley stopped dead. Fear flooded him. He looked back at the whispers, and he wanted to say something to them, but thought better of it. He dashed back across the road, hurried to his office, snapped at his secretary not to disturb him, seized up his telephone, and he almost finished dialing his home number when he changed his mind. He put the receiver back down, stroked his mustache, thinking, no, he was being stupid. Potter wasn't such an unusual name. He's sure there was a lot of people called Potter who had a son called Harry. Come to think of it, he wasn't even sure his half nephew's name was Harry. He'd never even seen the boy. It might even have been Harvey or Harold. And there was no point in worrying Mrs. Dursley. She always got so upset at the mention of her sister and he didn't blame her if he had a sister like that. But all those people, but all, but all the same, those people in cloaks, he found it a lot harder to concentrate on drills that afternoon, and he left the building at five o'clock. He was still so worried that he walked straight into someone just outside the door. Sorry, he grunted, as the tiny old man stumbled and almost fell. 
It was a few seconds before Mr. Dursley realized that the man was wearing a violet cloak. He didn't seem at all upset about being almost knocked to the ground. On the contrary, his face split into a wide smile and said in a squeaky voice that made a passerby stare, Don't be silly, my dear sir, for nothing could upset me today. Rejoice, for you know who is gone at last. Even muggles like you should be celebrating this happy, happy day. And the old man hugged Mr. Dursley around the middle and walked off. Mr. Dursley stood rooted to the spot. He had been hugged by a complete stranger. He also thought that he'd been called a muggle, whatever that was. He was rattled. He hurried to his car, set off for home, hoping that he was imagining things which he had never hoped for before because he didn't approve of imagining or imagination. As he pulled up to the driveway of number four, the first thing he saw, and it didn't improve his will or his mood, was a tabby cat he had spotted this morning. It was now sitting on his garden wall. He was sure it was the same one. It had the same markings around his eyes. Shoo! Shoo! said Mr. Dudley loudly. The cat didn't move. It just gave him a stern look. Was that normal cat behavior? Mr. Dudley, Mr. Dursley wondered. Trying to pull himself together, he let himself into the house. He was still determined not to mention anything to his wife. Mrs. Dursley had had a nice, normal day. She told him over dinner all about Mr. Next Door's problems with her daughters and how Dudley had learned a new word, won't. Mr. Dursley tried to act normal, but when Dudley had been put to bed, he went to the living room in time to catch the last report on the evening news. And finally, bird watchers everywhere have reported that the nation's owls have been behaving very unusually today. Although owls normally hunt at night, they are hardly ever seen in daylight, and there had been hundreds of sightings of these birds flying in, in every direction since sunrise. Experts are unable to explain why the owls have suddenly changed their sleeping pattern. Mysterious. And now over the the newscaster allowed herself a grin. Most mysterious. And now over to Jim McGriffin with the weather. Going to be any more showers of owls tonight, Jim? Well, Ted, said the news, said the weatherman. I don't know about that, but it's not only the owls that have been acting very oddly today. View is as far apart as Kent. Yorkshire and Dundee have been phoning in to tell me that instead of rain, as I promised yesterday, there has been a downpour of shooting stars. Perhaps people have been celebrating bonfire night early. It's not until next week, folks, but I can promise a wet night tonight. Mrs. Dursley sat frozen in the armchair, in his armchair. Shooting stars all over Britain? Eyes flower, fly, owls flying by daylight, mysterious people in cloaks all over the place, and a whisper, whisper about the potters. Mrs. Dursley came into the living room cup carrying two cups of tea. It was no good. He'd have to say something to her. He cleared his throat nervously. Uh, Petunia, dear, you haven't heard anything from your sister lately, have you? As he expected, Mrs. Dursley looked very shocked and angry. After all, they normally pretended she didn't have a sister. No, she said sharply. Why? Funny stuff on the news, Mr. Dursley mumbled. Owls, shooting stars, and there are a lot of funny looking people in town today. So, snapped Mrs. Dursley. Well, I just thought maybe Maybe it was something to do with, you know, her crowd. 
Mrs. Dursley slipped her tea, pursed her lips. Mrs. Dursley wondered whether he dared, excuse me, Mr. Dursley wondered whether he dared tell her that he heard the name Potter. He decided he didn't dare. Instead, he said it as casually as he could, their son, he's be about Dur Dursley's age now, wouldn't he? I suppose so, said Mrs. Dursley stiffly. What's his name again? Howard, isn't it? Harry, nasty common name if you ask me. Oh yes, said Mr. Dursley, his heart sinking horribly. Yes, I quite agree.